remember I told you that we're focusing in on five standards between now and the fast, right? We've got 40 days left. So today's standard is ELA.8.R.3.4, which is what? It's Good. Rhetorical devices. That's what we're going to work on today. Right now we're doing a do now, so let's go through that. Every day you're going to have a do now. It's in a PDF in Schoology, and it's going to go through each figurative language term because you can never get enough practice on that. So allegory is the first one. Allegory is a symbolic device in which characters or events in a story represent or symbolize ideas and concepts. One example of this can be found in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. People believe that the lion, Aslan, represents Jesus Christ from the Christian Bible. Watch the clip and consider why people might interpret the story in this way. So let's watch this real quick. And think about that. and the traitor stared. The stone table would crack, and even death itself would turn backwards. We sent the news that you were dead. Peter and Evan would have gone to war. We have to help them. We will, dear one, but not alone. Climb on my back. We have far to go. What a time to get there. It's a real one to cover your ears. <laughs>
follow along. We're going to do this together, but you'll also be working in groups as well. So I need group participation, actively leaning in to discussions. Okay, we got it? Who's got it up? You're going to work on with your neighbor. Because you're going to write notes. The other thing is you're going to take notes, but we're going to practice note taking. And that is a fast, efficient way to take notes. I don't want you writing the entire sentence out. I want you abbreviating where possible, and I'm going to help you with that. Okay? Let's get started. Welcome to Identifying Rhetorical Appeals in Eulogy of the Dawn, Part 1, an interactive English language arts tutorial for students like you. This tutorial is Part 1 of a two-part series. By the end of this tutorial series, you should be able to identify the rhetorical appeals of ethos, logos, and pathos used by George Vest in his speech, Eulogy of the Dog. All right, what I'd like you to do is when I tell you to go, we are going to recite this so that we all understand what the task and what we're trying to do today. So by the end of this tutorial series, you should be able to go. Identify the, uh -uh, all together. Identify the rhetorical appeals of ethos, logos, and pathos used by George Best in his speech, Eulogy of the Dog. Thank you. Now, here's your first definition. So you should not be on your tablet at this time. You should just have it up, but you should be writing. Eulogy. In case you didn't know, a eulogy is a speech or piece of writing that praises someone or something highly. Now, instead of writing the entire sentence, which takes a long time, you are going to pick out the words essential that will help you remember the definition. So that means you leave out a, and, the, that, of, or, only focus on the essential words. So, eulogy is a speech or piece of writing that praises someone or something highly. What could we keep in that would still allow us to remember the definition. Bianca. Okay. Anybody else? What do you think? Davi, what do you think? What words do we need in this to keep the definition sound? Eulogy. So eulogy, a speech or piece of writing that praises someone or something highly. Do we need the uh, word a, a? No. What, speech, do we need that? Yes. Yes, it tells us what it is. Speech. Speech or piece of writing. So do we Do we need both? Yes, no. a speech of writing that praises someone or something highly. You could do piece of writing or you could do speech. Speech, praises, someone slash something highly. Or someone slash thing highly. Someone slash thing highly. Got it? Much faster. Then it says, typically given for someone who has just died. What do we call that? An example. Well, no, what do we call that? Like, somebody, where do you go when somebody's just died to pay your respect? Funeral. Funeral. So you could go example, funeral. Or in parentheses, funeral. That's all you need. Okay? Start thinking like that. It'll save you a ton of time. Typically someone who has just died. The terms ethos, pathos, and logos are from Greek. You may hear them pronounced in various ways. For this tutorial series, we'll use the following pronunciations. Ethos, pathos, logos. With all of this in mind, let's get started.
Today, we're talking about rhetorical appeals, which sounds kind of intimidating, but it really shouldn't be. Because even if you don't know it, you use rhetorical appeals all the time. Show of hands, who knows right now, as we stand, what rhetorical appeals means? I have no hands. Awesome. That's fine. Cool. We're going to learn. Let's start by defining some terms. Rhetorical simply means related to the art of rhetoric. How can we make this very simple? Well, that definition isn't really helpful, especially if you don't know what rhetoric is. Rhetoric is the art of speaking or writing. So, talk about something being rhetorical, we're talking about how effective someone is at speaking or writing. An appeal is a request, usually a serious or urgent request. You may have heard that word on TV or in the news. So appeal is what? Urgent request. Okay, that's it. Appeal equals urgent request. For instance, the police are appealing to the public for more information about the accident. So when we put the two together, rhetorical appeals are simply the strategies a writer or speaker uses to make his or her requests effective. Okay, what's rhetorical appeals? What's rhetorical appeals? We need to know what it is, right? So what is it? Strategies. Do we need to say a writer or speaker? What can we say? Good job. Strategies make requests effective. You don't have to use the little bridging words to or what, whatever. It's your notes. You're going to know when you go back. That's the goal. When you leave it and come back, you still know what it means just by the words you've chosen. Good job. In this tutorial series, we're going to focus on the ways people use language to persuade readers and listeners to think differently or take action on an issue. We learn how to communicate, and pretty effectively, at a very young age. Think of a student trying to convince her teacher to give her another day to turn in an assignment. I'm really sorry I'm late with this essay, she might say. Last night was super busy for us at home, and I just didn't have enough time to get it done. Do you think I could have one more day to turn it in? Or imagine a new driver trying to persuade her dad to let her drive to her friend's house. Daddy, please, she says. I've been driving with you for months now. You know I'm a careful driver. Plus, Molly only lives two blocks away. In both situations, one person is using rhetorical appeals to persuade another person to do something the first person wants them to do. Okay, little exercise. You're grouped up in your desk. So, Z, go with this team over here. You all have teams. I want you to take a second, just a little exercise, and I want you to pretend that you have a coupon for a year's worth of unlimited pizza that you can door dash here every single day if you want at your disposal, and you are going to give it to one person in your group. So one person, declare, 
choose who the one person who has the pizza coupon. Everybody else, come up with your best game to persuade them to give it to you. All right? I'm going to give you a minute on that. Go. This, we're talking like top of the top unlimited potential here. examples of persuasion, where one person is trying to persuade another person to think or act differently. Select each example that contains persuasion. Once you've identified all the examples of persuasion, click Submit. Okay. Now, as a team, you will discuss the options, but individually you'll make your selections. Don't hit Submit yet, though. Just make your selections. When I tell you to, then you'll hit Submit. You will click on the ones that you feel are relevant. Go ahead and discuss. Give me a couple seconds for that. Yeah. 